the first bank of the United States. What's that? Get money, either by selling the stock or getting a piece of the profit. If you own 1% of the, uh, the shares, you get 1% of the profit. That's called a dividend. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later because that's got a big impact on the country. But shareholders are buying this because they expect to make money. That means shareholders have a lot of control over this corporation. Couldn't they manipulate the money supply to get rich? Remember when I showed you inflation, deflation, I throw that chart for Chase's Rebellion? I mean, if they want prices to go up, they can create inflation. Then when they want the value of their money to go up, they can create deflation. Couldn't they play with it to get rich? And here's the thing. It's going to put a lot of money into people who are not elected. They're not representatives. They don't represent the people. All they represent is who? Themselves. And that's what Jefferson feared. And that's a legitimate fear. Because they would probably do that. Back in 1836, the head of the Bank of the United States would manipulate, manipulate the currency to purposely create a panic, which is an economic depression. We'll get to why later on. Yeah, I know. Like, what the heck? There is a reason. Doesn't mean it's a good reason, but there is a reason. So, Washington, once again, his influence will decide it. And even though Washington sympathized with Jefferson and Madison, Hamilton had his ear. Washington threw its support to the bank and it passed a greater than margin. But there was one caveat. Was one caveat, Washington said, 20 years. This bill, the charter, will be for 20 years, and then they have to be rechartered or the bank is gone. So there's a 20-year time frame on this. Basically, the whole thing was, okay, in 20 years, we'll see if we still need it. Kind of like a slave trade. Remember the slave trade compromise? But 1811, in 20 years, the president will be somebody who hates the bank. Regardless of the work or not, just hating it. That person, James Madison. And the bank would go away and the financial system of the U.S. would collapse because they had nothing to replace it. Okay, that'd be a big deal anyways, but then we'd start a war and no financial system against the most powerful country in the world. Things were good there. That's called the War of 1812. So, that's the Bank of the United States. That's the first national bank building. Now it's a private bank, but it's right across the street from the White House. And if you ever get a chance, go there. It's a pretty amazing building. They don't offer tours all the time, but it's just, it's just cool to see. So, the third big polarizing issue with the tariff. This is a lot shorter. I'll explain that in a sec. But, you remember what a tariff is? It's a tax on what kind of trade? Foreign. Imports, yeah, foreign trade. And a protective tariff is a really high tax on foreign goods to protect American industry. And that's what Hamilton said in his, his pamphlet he wrote called The Report on Manufacturers. And what he said was, well, we have no industry in the U.S. at that time. And so they put a high tax on British goods. The, the industrial good that British made in the, the Industrial Revolution began with textiles. Put a high tax on that. That would encourage American merchants to start factories. That's what he thought. So he put a really high tax. That's his plan. But here's the problem with a high tax. High taxes raise all prices. All prices go up. Naturally, there we go. Prices. You like my little arrow? I used to have a little thing to click. You see one of those here you have you just click. But they don't fly very good. I accidentally threw it down the hall. I was kind of doing this one thing that I was faking throwing it. Wasn't holding it tight enough. Man, I tell you what, that thing just explodes. <laughs> Hmm? It yeah, it happens. Stuff happens, right? I'm just, I'm here for you. So with that, so the prices go up. Farmers don't manufacture anymore. That means they have to pay higher prices for all these goods. Washington, he sympathized with Hamilton, but he's also a plantation owner. He did not support it, and so the high protective tariff did not pass, even though it would be very divisive to this day. What they passed is said they call the revenue tariff. And a revenue tariff is just a small tariff just to increase revenues for the U.S. government. 
And that's why, remember I mentioned direct taxation with the three-fifths compromise, room. remember that whole thing about taxation and representation? Because of tariffs and land sales and excise taxes, they never did that. And that's the harbor, New York Harbor, I just thought that was a cool painting. But Britain, it was a real issue about whether or not to have no tariffs or protected tariffs, or they called it free traders or protections. And so to promote this, a lot of the trade goods, this is porcelain from China, they actually advertised it about having trade. And so this is in Britain, but it was also in the U.S. because they bought the same stuff. And it would say, remember I told you how they would have the S, double S as a kind of an F? So that's success, even though it doesn't look like success. It's hard even to say to trade. And remember I told this before, this was actually, if, boy, you really made it, you could buy porcelain from China. AKA, that's where China comes from. It's so much force to get. So, that's right. But even more divisive than that was, of course, war. The Anglo French War. And this one, I'm lumping together the wars around the French Revolution all the way through the Napoleonic War. So, basically, from 1791 to 1815. So, this whole time. And the war started with the French Revolution, but don't forget, Britain and France have been fighting this whole time. In fact, the French Revolution was partially caused by the American Revolution and the debt that France could not pay when they helped the United States. Remember, they signed the Franco-American Alliance and the U.S. could win their revolution. What battle in the Revolutionary War did the U.S. win in upstate New York? Do you remember that battle? Exactly. Saratoga, right here. The Battle of Saratoga. And so the U.S. and the French have an alliance still. But then the French Revolution happened. At first, it became, there was a monarch, but they had a constitution. But it got more radical, especially when they thought the king might incur, get the help of other monarchs in Europe to, to stop the revolution. And then they would arrest the king. And then in 1791, what happened to the king? Yes. Yeah, how did they behead somebody? The French found out, a French inventor came up with a very humane way, they thought, to kill people. Yes. Yeah, the guillotine. Yeah, very weighted blade that would come down. And the thought was it would kill them so quickly that there wouldn't be any suffering. I know, isn't that interesting? How you can find out we're gonna we're gonna kill you in a more humane way. The whole concept is kind of fascinating. But in fact, when they killed Louis the Sixteenth and his head fell in the basket. You can imagine the blood going everywhere. And when they picked the head up to the cheering crowd, and it was still mouthing words to the crowd. <laughs> okay, we don't know if he's actually mouthing words, but the mouth was moving and the eyes were blinking. The problem is you can't really ask. <laughs> now, how does that feel? Which, yes, they did try to do. I'm not making that up. Oh, the head keeps falling off. Well. We have to do it backwards now. And what happened to the queen? I have a queen, a Marie Antoinette doll, but for some reason the head doesn't fit. Oh no, another one broke. This is the second one I've had. I had another one and when I. Oh, was that the front? Oh, was that the whole thing? And it was a. Did she like cake? Well, cake was cake and bread. But supposedly she said that they mean cake. Which meant you're starving to see bread because she couldn't understand how you couldn't have food. Okay, she was rich, but why was she beheaded? Because she was the queen, and they beheaded the monarchy. They went through the terror, beheaded thousands. The original one I have, it was the head we chewed by four feet, so we shoot it straight into the glass until it finally broke. That is really kind of sick. But moving on, so once the oh, by the way, this is the Bastille. And the Bastille was a big friend. It was a fort, a, a fortress within France or within Paris. And by then, by uh, 18, you know, 1789, it was just a prison. And French peasants stormed it, freed the prisoners, and tore it down brick by brick. This massive fortification. It's huge. So all today's left is you go to Bastille Square, and it's just the outline of it. And it's, it's massive. How big this thing was, and they literally tore it down by hand, brick by brick. And the first time I was in Paris, this was in 2001. And in fact, first time I was in Europe, 
And we were sitting there, my wife and I, we just got retired from playing. It's night, we're sitting on the Bastille Square, really cool, eating at this outside cafe. And we're like, wow, that's, that's really cool. Did you have a croissant? Hmm? That's, that's Austrian. But, croissant to Austrian. But, we're sitting there, and we're looking through the square, and all of a sudden, we heard someone say, here they come. Well, my wife translated for me. He <laughs> said, here they go. And everyone started cheering and laughing. There's other people, they're waving like in those light sticks, you know what I mean, those things. And they're on roller skates. And they look, and they have like, like lays and stuff on. They got close, and like, this is weird. They got close and close, everyone's cheering, and then we could see why everyone was cheering. And this had to be between 500 and 1,000 people on roller skates, bare naked. Like, oh, like this going by. And that was our first night in Paris. And they come on oh, like this in front of them. Like, wow. Just like Helena. So, never did know why they did it. But, and, it, and the best part, everyone kind of cheered, but then just kind of went back to normal. And the light, you, this went on forever. Naked people going by, people were eating and talking. Just a normal day. So with that, don't know. Don't say that Mr. Partridge is saying we should do that in hell. <laughs> say Mr. Mahelich, right? Okay, moving on. When this happened, the French tried to get the U.S. involved in the war that started. Because you can imagine what happened. All the other monarchies in Europe said, we don't want this revolution to spread here, meaning we want to keep our heads. And so they all went to war with France. <laughs> and... By the way, be this war that why the French would get such a reputation for military prowess because and why to this day everyone copies the French because they took on Europe and nearly won. In fact, if they went and done so many stupid things, they did win. But Citizen Genet was a French. He came with a diplomatic team, but a French, uh, a Frenchman, a revolutionary, and you know it's a citizen anymore since they're all equal now with the revolution. They went away from titles of nobility to we're all equal, we're all citizens. In the Russian Revolution, do you know what they called themselves? The same deal all the way through the Soviet Union? Comrade. We're all equal. So, Citizen Genet came over to the United States and tried to spread revolutionary ideas, trying to get the United States involved in this revolution. Well, the U.S. government was furious. Washington was terrified that this revolution might spread here. The dangerous ideas of that revolution, and he wanted to keep his head. And then his, his supporters were relatively pro British. And so he would be considered one of the first, and they called them citizens or people who were not citizens of the US, but were here. What did they call them? Say it again? Aliens. Now that term terms have different connotations, so there's a lie, so that would kind of go away. But it's like these dangerous aliens coming from other countries or planets to spread discontent. And that attitude has been around from the beginning of the country through now. And as we all know, aliens do control us, correct? Reptilian shaped alien, aliens called reptiles, right? Everyone knows that, right? That turns green, you're watching. I'm just letting you know, it turns green. Red? It means they're watching. So with that, <laughs> uh, this is actually the Bastille. This is a battle called uh, Marina in northern, uh, northern, what is now Italy. So with that, to the United States, it was a war about trade. To the U.S. point of view, U.S. merchants were trying to trade with both Britain and France. And you can imagine Britain and France did not want their enemy to profit from American trade. And that's how the United States got involved. And this would be the stimulus to Washington saying avoid foreign entanglements. So Washington, even though we had a treaty, Washington declared independent or declared neutrality. And the U.S. was neutral. But that here's the, the neutrality proclamation. By the way, if you look at this, it says, you see, this says in testimony. You see the S? They make that like an F too. Yeah, testimony. It sounds like they had a list. But with that, it didn't mean we, we declared neutral and that U.S. owned merchant ships were not being stopped. Yeah. Um, since Jefferson was in France, did he want to 
Yeah, actually, France, or France, Jefferson thought this was his revolution. So even when it devolved into the terror, where they were beheading hundreds of people every day, Jefferson just ignored that, even though they only knew part of it, and said, boy, this is my revolution because of my Declaration of Independence. So he's proud. Yeah, he's proud of it. People can be delusional if they think it helps them. It's amazing how that can happen. To this day, you know. And French pirates called Corsairs were still stopping American-owned ships, and British, the British Navy was stopping American ships from getting into France because of a blockade. So U.S. ships are still being involved. So the United States involved, even if we declare neutrality, because they ignore the neutrality. To the French point of view, if you trade with Britain, you're our enemy, or vice versa. But let's be clear about something. Which Navy was stronger? The British Navy or the French Navy? The British Navy, by far. The French had the, great, the, French had the greatest army, land army, in the world. The British had the best Navy. So if we're declaring neutrality, which country do we probably have a better chance of trading with? Do we have a better chance of getting through a few French pirates or the entire Royal Navy? To the French point of view, who are we helping with this neutrality? We're helping the British. And so, to many people in the US, this seems like a very pro-British policy. You combine that with a treaty. The United States negotiated a treaty with Britain named after the chief negotiator, John Jay, Jay's Treaty. And it was blatantly pro-British. Now, John Jay was the chief justice of the Supreme Court, and since it wasn't clear who would negotiate treaties, they sent the chief justice, which is just so weird to think about today. Today would be the Secretary of State. So you know I'm going to ask you, so let me ask you, who's the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court today? And they always named the court after the Chief Justice. So like, if this was the J Court. When I was your age, it was the Burger Court. Mm, yummy, Warren Burger, you know? He's the Attorney General. I know who they start naming. John Roberts. John Roberts, exactly. Appointed by George W. Bush. So this is the Roberts court right now. And so, no, they would not send John Roberts, but supporters of Jefferson, soon to be called Republicans, were so mad that they, they said this clearly shows that the administration, Washington and Jay, are traitors. They've always been pro British, which is just ridiculous. And here they are burning John Jay in effigy. effigy. And they're calling themselves Sons of Liberty. Imagine calling George Washington a traitor. It sounds like today's politics, doesn't it? And to give you an idea how mad people were, do you remember 1774, when Britain did that Quebec Act and gave them, and Sons of Liberty said, they're going to give all this to the French, which was just ridiculous. Same kind of thing. But hey, when you're wild up and you want to make people afraid, that's what you say. So, it would be these issues, but none bigger than this one. By the way, this is the old Northwest Territory. The British never left forts here. The Jay's Treaty was very pro-British. Until, well, heck, well into the 20th century, people still called like Minnesota and Wisconsin the old Northwest. Yeah. Why was Washington so worried about being decapitated, even though he wasn't that He wasn't that way. He just didn't want the revolution to come here. Okay. Well, let me do this real quick for the Bellwings. What this is going to lead to in is these issues are the first two political parties. So these could be people who wanted the best for the country, at least ideally. I know we could argue, depending on your point of view. And we have the Federalists. They're not the same as the ones for the Constitution. Now, this is different. And the Republicans. And the Federalist Party, their roots would eventually become today's Republican Party. And the Republican Party uh, back then would become the Democrats. And that's why they call these, you see in the textbook, did you notice the Democratic Republican Party? They didn't call themselves that. So I'm going to call them next. We know the arrow, now we know the contents. And I'm going through this pretty fast, the big issue. By the way, that's why they're doing it, they're building the first executive mansion. That's 1800, the executive mansion is built. John Adams, the president, would move in. And the British would come. So, first, they're in the Northeast, South and the West for the Republicans. But it makes sense because that's where the merchant class were. And this was government of the aristocracy, of the elite. 
not a permanent aristocracy per se. Here, more and more they started talking about the common man, meaning white men. And they were more egalitarian. Egalitarian means less of a difference between the classes. So think about equality of the classes. Now, something that's going to come out of the Industrial Revolution is going to be called socialism. And socialism means basically get rid of the classes, so there's just one class. Not everyone equal, just only one class. Egalitarian just lessen the difference between the two. So there is a difference there. And then the next one, all, we already know these basic elements, so I'm just putting on this beginning of the chart. So, urban and rural, right? These are ones we already kind of know, correct? Industry and finance, that's banking, stocks, here, agrarian. We already know, right? Tariff, anti-tariff. Strong central government, stronger states. I'll explain the asterisk in just a second. Loose interpretation of the Constitution, strict, meaning implied powers, enumerated powers. And I think I have two more. They feared the mob, elite rule. Here, more and more, they would talk about we need more democratic rule. Not democracy, but more suffrage. Remember, suffrage is the vote. And lastly, Britain and France. So, our, these are all ones we have. I mean, I don't really need to explain that much. But should I explain the asterisk real quick? Right for the bell rings? I think I've already kind of explained this. The Republicans wanted more power to the states and a strict interpretation of the Constitution because the Federalists were in charge. What happened as soon as the Federalists were out of power and the Republicans went in charge? Just flopped it. That means, and this still goes on to the states, so all political parties in some way are what? Huh? Yeah, they're all really biased to their point of view and against the other one. And if they all say we don't like, when they're out of power, we hate strong central governments. When they're in power, they stretch the power of government. What is what are you when you say you want one something and then do the other thing? Aren't they all hypocrites? Yeah, yeah, isn't that kind of what it is? Does hypocrisy matter? This is gonna be very cynical, but no. What matters? Who has power? So we got a uh, quick little war. Uh, and then we got to do an election, and we'll see where we're going tomorrow. Are we getting into the new uh, Yeah, I'll tell you. Well, I'll figure out a way to tell you that story. Don't worry. That's a good story. I'll tell you the old stories. And I'll tell you I'll tell you two new old stories, and then I'll tell you the Andrew Jackson. We only have a lot of new stories. Yes. What? No, I gave it up. Do you want it for this test or another test? Okay. I thought I gave an extra Then I'm going. Then I'm done. Have a good day, everybody. Right when you find work. And hang by your thumbs. I think I think the cloud looks right. It has to be really big. That's why the crab was a good supplement. If the eyes move, then we know it's a bad one. What class? Yeah, I know. People are disgusted. What class do you have now? Huh? What class do you have now? Right now? No, last grade. Uh, it was just a teaching assistant. Oh. Oh wait, say you know, you know. We have rules. No, I no. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Political party federalist. See, you're getting so good at that. I'll be even. Show. Oh, nice grab. No!
Yeah. No, I, I, I didn't. I'm not saying because it rotates. I was just having kids. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, I'm going to say that the Bible is not inspired by humans. It's inspired by God. Oh, this isn't even us. I'm not I was like, what is this? Good. Yeah. I just had to actually look at it. Real life, I'm not talking about it. Yeah. I was like, I feel like I No, thank you. Even though. I have this one when I was gone. Hold on to a sec. Let me. I'll get this one. I don't know how to do any of it. And we took a test today. And I don't know what. Should we have a quiz today? Yeah. Well, I mean, I need to study for it. Hmm? All right. Quiz today. Yes. It's in the third dimension. Let's put it in the fifth dimension. Wait, we're taking the rest of the air. Huh? Uh, a few things I'm going to show you. We got we got, got one more thing to finish of the war. I got to show you some weapons because. <laughs> Why is everyone out to get me? You know, all those years I didn't want. I never wanted an aid, and now I and now I think I heard that your your allowance for aid. I should have probably. I should probably. Want, I want one. Now. 